ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Portaway Podcast. Showtime, Sean P. No ant. We got a replacement today. My man Skip. What's going on, big dog? Everything's good. Man. How we feeling, man? Feeling good, man. Um, in great spirits. A yeah. Beautiful day outside and boxing. Is... I was I was gonna say like we ain't gonna beat around the bush. Like we know each other through boxing. We won't... absolutely. Yeah. And tell me how you came into into boxing in in the space that you're in now as a you know. As a boxing media, like yeah. That? Well, I moved to Vegas, went down to Floyd's gym, just to see fighters. I always like to be around the boxing game. You know, my yeah. mom wouldn't didn't let me play boxing. I mean, let me fight, but she yeah. let me play football. I don't play boxing. No, you know, you don't play boxing. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't never disrespect it like that. Yeah. But so what happened? Came here. I, I used do to watch Don. Huh? You do, I do it with my kids though. I let them, <laughs> for now, they got like another year until we. They can't say let's play boxing. You know. Yeah, you don't play boxing. <laughs> you don't though. play boxing. It might feel like fun and games yeah. till you get hit. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I was a fan of Dante's Boxing Nation. You know, when I lived in the Washington D.C. area, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Shout out Lando Palmer Park, the whole nine. Um, no gang signs. No, nah, this, this is peace. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> the thumb was, the pink was out a little bit. No, that's because I'm double jointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so came out here, was at Floyd's gym one day, uh, seeing Dante. I was like, oh, man, you the guy, Dante's from Dante's Boxing Nation. Yeah. So it's an honor to meet you, man. I love your work, you know, this, this, and that. And uh, he said, is this something you think you'll like to do? Because I always see you out the, down at the gym. I was like, absolutely. So yeah. he said, I'll tell you what, we got... Um, Couple of press conferences, I'll get you in there. We got fight weeks to get you in there. Did a boxing expo, uh, got me in there. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, one day, I was just shadowing and shadowing and shadowing. Also, Blue Blood, shout out to Blue Blood. Uh, he he was oh. kind of part of the team and um, it kind of just helped me out learning stuff, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So one day, Dante called me, he said, look, man, I know it's fight week. Uh, I need you to go cover Joe Horn. I need you to go cover the Joe Horn, um, uh, Terrence Crawford fight. So I'm like, wait a minute, you talking about the Terrence Crawford fight? So this is by myself. Yeah. He said, man, you can do it. You yeah. got it. You can do it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, all right. I, <laughs> okay, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. So I remember my first interview. I got. I think I got Bud to the side, and my brain just locked up. You was nervous. Yeah, because it's like, how do you? do the job of a Dante's boxing nation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's like uh, some sports, that's like Stephen A. Smith saying, hey, could you host my show for me, you know, while I'm gone? <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. doing that. I'd be like, uh, so, um, yeah. how you like the lights around the studio, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so to make a long story short, um, I did a good job that fight week, unbeknownst to me, because I thought I was like, I sucked. Right? Yeah. Dante said, bro, you did a good job, man. You was in place, camera angles, the whole nine. I'm like, all right, cool. So. But this is me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I might have another one for you to do. Let's go. So what I started to do is started to go around to different gyms, not only just to Floyd's gym, but I started to go around like the city gym. I went to, to a couple of other different gyms to, to develop uh, chemistry with fighters and trainers, develop a rapport with fighters and trainers. Mm-hmm. And it went a long way because you can you get more info out of people if they trust you. Yeah. They know you and you're familiar. They they trust you. Okay, yeah. start talking to you. So, no doubt. Went to uh, a few other things, man. I just kept cracking at it, cracking at it. And he's, he was giving me more assignments, trailing with him. Then he said, you know what? I'm just going to get you credentialed to go start doing things on your own. But at the time, I was confident that I can do it on my own. Uh-huh, you know uh-huh, what I mean? Uh-huh. But then I started having those super big fights, you know, your, your, you know the, the big heavyweights or whatever, the big, big you know, tank fights and stuff like that. It, it was a whole different ball game. Yeah. But I loved it. Yeah. What is it about the fight game that you love? Because I always wanted to box. Yeah. You know, I always wanted to box. I feel like this is my second lease on life being around boxing um, because I didn't have the chance because my, again, my, my mom, she didn't want me to box talking yeah. about you can get brain damage. But again, I, like I told you before, when the CTE thing came, I looked at my mom like, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. But uh, it was, it was almost like discovering a whole new journey within myself over again. It's like I had a second chance to relive my dream to box, mm-hmm. you know, my original dream to box. My, my first love is football now. That's my first love. I ain't mad at you. 
My but, first uh, but to have a chance to be around the fight game and I get punched and I get hit, I said, it's a good trade-off. That's trade what off. I'm enjoying about it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm enjoying about it. I don't, you know, I can enjoy it and look at it and not have to be in it and do it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you ever train? No. Okay. So no. like nothing at all? Just fought in the neighborhood. No. Getting into it from the space of a, being a media person. Guy, we'll just go. What, what do you want me to call? I don't know what to call it. I guess a, I don't know. Media, media guy, media, yeah, yeah, media guy. Yeah, yeah. sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I guess. Media guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, what? What did you find out that you didn't know about it? That you were like, man, I never knew this existed, or I never knew it was like that. You know? Oh my God, it's countless things that I didn't know. Um, this whole thing is off the cuff, by the way, y'all. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably I'm I'm trying I'm not him. I'm trying to stick him. So. Yeah, I'm not him. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, what, you know, coming from being a boxing fan all my life to learning the intricate parts of boxing is what really blew my mind. Okay, it's like I've always had respect for boxers, but when I seen them actually train every day for a fight, when I seen them spar and run those miles and like they're running while I'm asleep, like, <laughs> and then when you do all this, you do all these things, you lift those weights, you run them 10 miles, seven miles, whatever you run. And then you might accidentally get caught with something that you normally wouldn't get caught with. Yeah. Now it sets you back yeah. down the shuffle. Yeah. That has to hurt. Yeah. Like I was sharing with you before, it's not like football or basketball where, man, you missed a shot. We could have been in a championship. Yeah. I can I can give myself that, that crutch saying, well, you know, I did my best, but. We lost because of him. Sure enough, sure and we enough. lost because of this coach. Well, yeah. in boxing, like, again, there's no timeouts. There's no tap in. There's no, <laughs> I twist my ankle, timeout. Yeah. You got to adjust to it. Yeah. Um, for me, back to uh, the original question, uh, what I learned more so as a boxing media guy yeah. than I did as a fan is the work the dedication and the work that these guys put in every day, man. Mm -hmm. Even when there are no fights, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To be that ready. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us, you know, when you when you play other sports, you have a schedule. Okay, September we play this team. Yeah. November we play October, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, you might not have a fight and somebody call you, hey, you want to fight? Mm -hmm. Damn, I've been drinking last night. Oh, I've been drinking this week. Oh, I'm out of shit. I ain't been running. Yeah. The opportunities in this fight game are so slim. Yeah. And, but I love to see how somebody can be not really unheard of, but not with not a lot of expectations. And they can go from that yeah. to a household name in one in one month. Yeah. To me, that is so dope. But then it can reverse the other way. You can be a household name and then take a loss now, you're back in the shuffle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, when we look at um, what just transpired now two weeks ago with Ryan and, and Tank, yeah, and it kind of just go to what you're saying, like all that work that, that both gentlemen put in, you know, obviously both of those guys and even in the moment, you got to initiate a game plan, you got to make adjustments, you got to, you know, take them licks and keep moving through it, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot that goes into this and it's like I said to you today, like we're going to talk some more about Tank and Ryan and kind of what people have been saying about this fight since everything happened. And, and I don't want to come to the rescue. I don't want to seem like I'm coming to the rescue, but I have probably have the best view of anyone that could be talking about this fight and articulating the ins and outs, the, the, the whys and wins and the hows and, and all of those things. And I just find myself looking at this and I'm like, you got a kid that uh, is only 24 years old, and realistically, what I tried to the picture that I tried to paint last week is we had an A plus fighter in the ring with a B minus fighter on a bad day, a C plus fighter, and you choose what kind of day he was having against Tank the other day. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you what conflicted me, and again, see, this is this. It goes back to. Were you in the in the in the stadium for that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was there. Yeah. 
Yeah, that nigga like said I was there. Yeah, hey, listen, you it was close, a, you was closer than I was. <laughs> I would guarantee you. It that. was the spring of 2023. <laughs> I was there. Yeah. No, uh, what the fandom in me got caught up in hoopla of what was going on, but the yeah. the box and media guy of me started saying, okay, well, I'm 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 delving into the details of this fight. Okay, he's good, but he's really not supposed to beat Tank. Yeah. But when you interview a Goosen, man, I'm going to tell you something. Goosen will have you, <laughs> baby, I'll call. Baby, baby. we're going to bet the house on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Goosen, when Goose, especially when Goosen hit me with the, you know, after, you know, after over 50 years, you know, I have never had, I'm telling you, somebody made some bets off that, just that comment. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is Goosen. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I know the, the importance of selling the fight as well. Uh, with that said, Ryan is a special fighter. Yeah, he has heart, but I can give him credit. I didn't. I, I didn't. He. I seen a lot of people come in scared of Tank, sort of like uh, when when Tyson fought. People came in. Brian wasn't scared of. Him. Yeah, but I believe when he caught some of those blows, and even after he got caught, yeah. I believe that saying, "Okay, wait a minute." Yeah, yeah, we we really here now. You ever been driving? And you're from DC, so I'm mm-hmm. gonna just. This is an analogy, but I'm sure you can. You can um, relate to this. You have been driving and out of nowhere, it just started raining. Yeah. What you got to do? Now, back in the day when I was in Ohio, we didn't have, my car at least, didn't have no automatic windshield wipers. I got to, while I'm driving and it out of nowhere, I got to find a windshield wiper. I got to make sure everything else is good. Now, I got to turn the lights on. There's so many different things you got to do after that first big crack. And people that don't drive in the rain or aren't used to it just out of nowhere, you're going to look at it and say, oh, he just got dropped. Yeah. It just, the thunderstorms just started. But see, that's, see, that's the thing. Unless, that's why I always um, trust the opinion of boxers and former boxers, former coaches, current coaches. Shout out my man, Jay Leon. I talk to him all the time. Shout out Coach Pad, man. Shout out Coach Fareed. These are guys I trust. Yeah. As long as you're, as well as yourself, uh, these yeah. are guys I trust yeah. to help me grow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I've studied, yeah. but I can study all I want. I don't know what it's like to have to slip this jab. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get punched. I'm ready to bite, and kick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like you said, for, again, it goes back to what I was saying as far as you being your own teammate. You have to make those adjustments, mm-hmm. even when you have a trusted coach in your corner. You can listen to what he has to say, but you have to execute it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, when, when Ryan, uh, to me, in my opinion, I think Ryan's whole fight plan kind of changed after he got up. Mm-hmm. I think he said, okay. Now, when it comes to habitual stuff, stuff yeah. you're comfortable with, yeah. a lot of times we fall back into what's just comfortable for us sure. in, in times of... In, in times of need, in times of danger, yeah. uh, you know, it just it just happened, and then Tank got. But the- hey, let's go back real quick because of, and when you and when you look at his face right here, I didn't get a sense that that Ryan was intimidated or had you know quote unquote fear of Tank. I thought that he was comfortable and confident in what he could do. Yeah, and I think that um, you know, if anything, it's like. And we'll, we'll just play on the analogy of driving in the car and you just got your temps. It's your first time really getting behind the wheel and then you got to get on the highway. Really think about the first time you got on the highway. Oh, it was scary. And so it takes a couple rounds for you to get kind of for the sake of where it's comfortable. Yeah. You, know what, you know you know what you're doing until you get on the highway. It's just a little, the speed's a little a bit different. The speed's a little bit different. That's a great analogy. You know analogy. what I mean? Yeah. The cars are a little, all of a sudden the cars are a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? There's cars left and right. You know what I mean? So, and again, like I'm not trying to come to his defense. However, and I use the, I, I use what I consider to be a very strong word that carries a very strong, a strong negative connotation with it. Mm-hmm. I use the word fear. And I knew that I was going to use that word because I, t- I tweeted it the night that the, of, the, of the fight. I, I tweeted it the moment that, you know, he didn't get up. And, and it's interesting because when I saw the fight last night in the main event, 
when Zapata put down um, our Abeleda, I was like, oh. I was like, well, that Ryan fight could have gone one or two ways. Now, as a fan, we a lot of people just really wanted to see, you know, they wanted to see that that lion jump on the zebra at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he sacrificial and, lamb. And he robbed you of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but may, maybe he's smart enough to know that he shouldn't, he shouldn't give you guys the the satisfaction of seeing him in his weakness. Seeing him in, you know what I mean, his in in in, in his most vulnerable state. Because Orbeleta was literally on the canvas face first. Uh, for the second words, damn near about to roll around, you know. The thing about the thing about speaking about the, the, the tank Ryan fight, um, to me, it the way now I've never been punched in my liver, so I'm never going to doubt a man's pain threshold. Mm. But to me, the way the fight ended, it was like Fourth of July when you seeing all the fireworks bust, and then yeah. something just go pew. <laughs> That, that that's literally how I felt until I looked at Tank. Once I looked at Tank, I was like, "It's it's it's Javante Tank Davis," and that's just what he does. Tank to me, man, is a dangerous man, but he's at his most dangerous point when he's looking in your head, he's smiling and shaking his head and walking towards you. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you're done. Because it's almost it's almost like he he bit you and he's tasting your blood. Yeah. Oh, you taste good. As serious as he can be, at ba basically every point of a promotion, <laughs> and every point of the beginning of a fight, and then once he starts to crack a smile, it's like, what can you do? Because he he handled you when he was serious. Now he's just in a point where he's completely comfortable. And he knows that you're you're at some point you're gonna, as he likes to say, feel him. I've had to learn this about him uh, because I've had to you know learn this through his fights that he likes to toy with his prey. You know, <laughs> you know, you ever seen like a a big a big rottweiler or something? You throw them the steak, they don't just eat a gobble up. They bite a little bit, and toss yeah. it up in the air, yeah, toss it around. Yeah, that's what he do to people. Yeah, he bites you, he toss you around. My wife watches our our little like neighborhood talk thing. They they you know the neighborhoods keeping us safe, you know. <laughs> and my wife was on there one day. I guess a coyote got got in somebody's backyard, and they always leave their dog out in the backyard. But the dog the, and the dog is really really little. And the person puts the video on the neighborhood watch thing and says, "Beware, this could be your dog." And you see the coyote tossing it up in the air. Mm. Like you just said, just playing with it. Now it happened to just be a toy that the dog had. It wasn't the actual <laughs> dog. And I'm like, I'm laughing at it. But to your point, like, yeah, I, I see that in Tank where he wants to figure you out, figure you out. The same as from a standpoint, an animal just wants to figure out what move you want to make. And once I meet you there and I got you, I'm just gonna play with you a little bit before it's all over. I want people to understand something when when we talk about Tank, man, Tank and a few other people, but right now we're talking about Tank. We, as boxing media, we as boxing fans, we have to appreciate what we're seeing in our lifetime. You yes. know what I'm saying? I'm old enough to have seen Sugar Ray and seen Hagler and seen the Hearns and guys like that. Because once those guys are gone, sometimes there may be a lapse, a gap in time where you don't see that kind of raw talent, but Tank, He's special in any era, man. I don't think I'm the guy to do it, but I, I prefer to talk about what fights are going to be great fights. Not who who's going to get tank. That's everybody's conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, if he can't do it, who can? Who's going to get him? Who's going to... No, bump that. Enjoy this greatness. And when another great fighter gets in the ring, enjoy the night of greatness. You know what I mean? I think to, right now, especially with... Uh, and and it's a legitimate conversation and argument that Shakur Stevenson could be the one to beat Tank Davis. But I prefer the conversation, and as I like to say, that is the greatest fight. To, that's the best fight to be made in boxing. Okay, well, st uh, well, um, strategic wise, I, I I agree with you on that on that point because it would be interesting interesting to see how Tank could penetrate 
Shakur Stevens' defense because he's stingy with his face. Hey, listen. And, <laughs> he's stingy. And, and it's a lot of fights I don't talk about, and I, I especially especially with uh, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spencer. So I ain't, no comments until that fight's made because I don't want no heat coming at me. But that's another fight that I'm not going to comment on until maybe, oh my God, like maybe until night of because the things that I feel that I know about this fight or that fight specifically, I really don't want to be the one to, for the sake of words, let the cat out of the bag or share information about one of the fighters that the other fighter or the other team didn't know. But I think stylistically, I think competitively, mathematically, I mean, I think that that is... That's a fight for the ages right there. Both guys are accurate. Both guys are 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 very good with their defense, very good with their offense. And and the size makes sense for both those guys. They're right around the same height and the list goes on, man. I think that you know that's that's a fight right there. Again, I'm old enough to remember <laughs> some of those greatest. <laughs> and when I tell you that a Crawford Spence fight when you guys do fight <laughs> it would it would in my opinion it would be up there with those Ray Duran Hagler's Hearns type of conversations because it, these, what were some of the what were some of the like greatest like fights you saw live like not not in person but like just on TV in person what what are some of like the fights that you just were mind blown? Hagler Hearns, uh, Ray Hagler, Ray Hearns. Um, was it Ray Duran? Yeah. Uh, those guys back then, it's, it's like they were fighting angry, man. I, I don't know what you call it, but yeah. And that's back then too, when you can turn on TV on Saturdays and see. Look who's behind you. Now I think he fights a little angrier than him. Yeah. But he fight he, he don't fight angry. He fights mean. And I think maybe that might be maybe that might be what you mean. Yeah. He, he yeah. fights mean. He fights mean and angry. And and I don't think, you know, because he fights mean and angry, he could beat him because he only fights me. I think I think that dude is just just flat out. When I get in the ring, I'm I'm that good. And I'm and I'm going and I mean everything that I do. <laughs> you know? And this one, he just he got a chip on his shoulder the size of a freaking truck. So. Yeah, see, that's my point with this particular fight. It's like you can point out each other's. You can say, "Well, this is strength, and this is weakness, and this is strength, and this is weakness." But hey, why you had to get? Is this after he beat me? <laughs> Better not be. I pulled it from Google, so <laughs> you could have got another picture. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, uh, you just don't know. You, it's, we have to see it. But I don't. This fight has to happen now. At how, worst, I'm sorry to cut okay. you off. How old were you when? How old were you when Ray fought Hagler? I was, I believe, I was 13 or 14 years old. Do you remember any of the barbershop conversations? Yeah, you, you, Anybody? Any of the guys on the block? Anything? What they were talking about as it pertained to that fight? You know, what's crazy is I remember. We was, they let us in the gym, the kids, you know, they let around, they let us in the gym to see, um, to watch him train for Hagler. To watch Ray train, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why every time I see that fight, that fight is always special for me because I remember watching, that's the first time I got to watch a champion train for, Yeah. A, I don't know how big that fight was. We sure. was happy to be in it. This is where the sure. Sugar Ray. Sure. Now, this is the guy on the <laughs> Wheaties box, sure. you know what I'm saying? He lived around our way, you know what I mean? Oh, he's from around our way, but uh, to see that fight, and man, guys are warriors now. Any if you step in that in that ring, you're a warrior. I don't care what your record is, you're a warrior, in my opinion. Yeah. Unless you're just one of those type of guys that just get punched and lay down. Okay, you got your chick now, you're not a warrior. Yeah. You're a chump. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but I think back then you seen more wars, what it cause quote unquote wars, because it, that's how you were taught the box. Whereas now it's more so Make business decisions. Mm -hmm. I respect it because mm -hmm. I never uh, question a man for mm -hmm. making his money or the method or on of how he's making his money. Mm -hmm. Never question that. Mm -hmm. I never say a fighter soft because they, you know, they duck this and that. You know, you hear people say, "Well, this fighter, this fighter that don't do this, they don't, they duck people or they run." Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, if I had a choice to make a million dollars, 
to get bludgeoned, and I had a choice <laughs> to make a million dollars to get. To, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, the I'm, reason why I asked that question though is because I just want to know, like, if people were talking about boxing back then. Oh the way yeah, they talk about it now. I think people talked about boxing back then even more so than now because we didn't have social media. Well, no. For, for example, every the conversation after Tank beats Ryan literally makes the kid quit. Like he doesn't get up, and this man, like, instead of allowing him to enjoy this moment, it's okay. Well, who's next? And not only well, who's next, but who's gonna beat him? And again, like I don't agree with that conversation. I think the conversation is okay. What's the next great fight that he can be in? Right. Because this didn't give us what we expected. We didn't know that this kid was a B minus ish fighter because social media didn't allow us to see that or believe that. So what what were the conversations back then, especially with Ray getting in the ring with Mar with Marvelous? You know, what was the conversation I, like back I then? I think um, boxers back then were looked at more in a light of a hero than. With people quote unquote hating on people now. And yeah. I'm gonna tell you why, because back then, when you seen a boxer, you didn't see him on the Portaway podcast for the fight week, or you didn't see him on Dante's Boxing Nation for the fight week. You seen him the day of the fight, and you ain't seen him no more until his next fight. Right. Unless he made the news, you know, crashing the car, being drunk or something. Yeah. You know, but. You got real specific with that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no hate on nobody. Because yeah. I'm one of them old heads coming. You talk about. Yeah. <laughs> You know, nah, yeah, but uh, it, but what I'm saying is, it was the the lack of availability back then made people, I think, at least bigger than gods and more special. Whereas now, yeah, you can see somebody talking on their podcast every day or talking on Twitter every day, so they feel like they know the person. And and now with Tank, I got to go back to Tank. With Tank, I feel like Tank is receiving some of the hate that was dealt Floyd's way just because he's a, he was a Floyd fighter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, mm. Like you said, most people are like, oh, this is a bad person. I can't wait to the next fight. Well, now you got guys saying, oh, he can't beat this person or he knocked him down. Oh, he knocked him down because, you know, the guy wasn't ready. He can't beat that person or he knocked him down. He knocked him down because he was too old, but, but just a month ago you said he can't beat him. Mm -hmm. We're living in an age of hate, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're living in an age of hate and... Um, it's almost it's it's almost uh, to the point you know to the little statement they made years ago they build you up to tear you down. Yeah, that's a real situation. Yeah, they build you up to tear you down. Yeah, um, Tank is special, and 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 Bud and and Bud Crawford and uh, Errol Smith are special. We have yeah. to embrace this time and space with these great athletes, with these great giants, while they still at the height. And at the peak of their talents, man. Yeah. Because this ain't talent you just get from Walmart, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is not talent that you just, okay, you you can be born great, but you got to be great yeah. to go along with those great genetics that God blessed you with. Yeah. Uh, last thing I'm going to say about this fight, and then okay. we, can, we can just move on, right. but um, there was a quote-unquote leak. I don't really don't consider it a leak, but... Um, there was audio caught of Joe and Ryan's conversation. It sounded like it was in the ring right after the fight or, you know, right as the fight ended or it could have been at another point uh, in the night after the fight, of course. But mm -hmm. did you happen to see what that what that was where he said, you know, Joe saying, hey, you know, did he catch you in the rib? And Ryan says, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to continue or something along those lines. I'm going to let you. Uh... Did you see that? I heard something about it. But. Uh -huh. Yeah, because again, like it's <laughs> like you said, when you when you train all this time, and this is the the thing that people don't really truly understand about this specific punch, it's weird because it's almost like your legs are in quicksand. You can't move, and it's weird. But that's and I know none of us have ever been caught in quicksand, but we've seen it in movies. We've yeah, seen yeah, that guy. Like, like once it. you get in quicksand, you are literally helpless. You shall. But there it is, right there. He said, "Did, uh, did it hit? Did it hit that rib part at all?" Ryan Ooh. said, "Yeah, I knew it." He said, "I didn't want to continue because of my rib." But again, we've seen on the movies when you get caught in quicksand. And then we've also seen when they get pulled out of that quicksand, then they get up and they start running, right? That's what that punch is like. 
The punch is so like debilitating where you can't, you can hardly breathe. You're completely cognizant from, from the, from the, from the, from the, from the chest up. <laughs> your heart's beating everything, but the, it's like your lower body. It's like you can't move. And then <laughs> once you catch your breath, and enough air gets to the, and enough blood gets back to the legs, you're good. And it's almost like it never happened. Just like somebody getting pulled out of the quicksand and they get up and run. It's like it never happened. So, let me, so in the moment, I'm sorry, but so in the moment when it happens, yeah, he was, he was caught in quicksand and he could have stood up, but he decided I, I can hardly breathe now. <laughs> and he over there looking at me smiling. This ain't going to, this, only, the only thing that's going to happen is what happened last night. And he robbed y'all of that opportunity to see him. For anybody who thinks he's just a good looking kid and he's just a social media star and he shouldn't be in boxing. He's a good boxer. He ain't on tanks level. We just learned that. He's a good boxer. And it's okay though. Yeah. It's, it's okay. He's a good boxer, but he's not even really, he's a B-ish boxer, which is good enough to beat most. It just ain't good enough to beat that guy. I and I think man. a lot of people are mad because they wanted to see him crumble. And he wouldn't allow them to see him crumble. The best part about it is you didn't see him crumble. So therefore, he exposed himself in, in some ways. A lot of people are going to say he can't take a body shot. A lot of guys that fight him will probably be looking to dig that specific punch. But for the most part, you didn't see him in anything that that wasn't like he couldn't, like he just could not yeah. perform. Right. He's a good boxer. Right. He just can't beat Tank Davis, right, right. you know. So he, you know, I, I was here. I don't agree with Oscar De La Hoya saying his career, his career is just getting going. Because the last time I looked, yeah, uh, he was talking about retiring at twenty six or something, twenty seven, something like that. So point. no, his career ain't just getting going. But he'll learn from this, or he should learn from this, and he should be better when he comes back to the ring. That's a good point. That's a good point. Now back to that liver shot. What I'm, I'm asking because I don't know. Then we can move on. But man, I've never. I don't think I really had a liver shot, but I had the wind knocked out of me. How much different is it? It's uh, well, because playing football caught a helmet right here, and I'm like, <laughs> but from what I've been told and from what I know, the people have said that when you get hit correct correctly in the liver, it's like your liver shifts spaces, like like it actually like. Shifts, you know. Nah, I'm good. I'm <laughs> yeah. good. I'm good right here. And like. I'm la I'm laughing, but it's not it's not really that funny because the even more serious thing is when you get hit and you get knocked out. They say that the brain moves inside of the skull as well. So it's kind of the same in terms of the body, where that liver just kind of I don't know if it shifts. I don't know if for a moment it go from here to here and it's got to get back to here. I really don't know what it is, but I do know that it is a lot like. When you get the wind knocked out of you, the only difference is you can't catch your breath. And for in these the 10 seconds yeah. that you get to get back up. Listen, you know? And yeah. for these reasons, for all those breakdowns you did of the organs, this is why in this sport and all others, I have no problem with somebody holding out for the proper money. Mm. Because yeah. guess what? You've been in there risking your life. For our entertainment, yeah. we we drinking beer, yeah. drinking liquor. Yeah, never looked at it like that. After you know, after <laughs> uh, you go behind that curtain, and you got the the emergency people checking you out. That's what really changed my whole mindset. My first couple of fights, matter of fact, one of them was at Sam's Town when they took them back past the curtain. No, uh, um, it's playing in Hollywood. Well, it was playing in Hollywood. Oh yeah, yeah, the Virgin now. Yeah, the Virgin now. Yeah. 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 And they took those guys back up there, and I remember, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was sitting back there, he was just, he just, I mean, he didn't get knocked out, but he got messed up, so he sat him in the chair, put the lights all in his eyes, and I'm thinking like, we don't see this. Yeah. We just see, you know, we high five, yeah, man, I want my bed or I'm paying up. Yeah. I'm still drinking my beer, still eating my good, my nachos and my crab dip and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But after that guy goes off stage, he jacked up. He's yeah. got to heal. Yeah. Sometimes mentally he has yeah, to heal. Yeah. I just lost it all. I just lost my big payday. I just lost yeah, my belts. Yeah. I got caught. Yeah. I can really beat this guy, but I caught I got caught by underdog. Yeah. All that. That psychological all damage that. is worse than those scars, bro. Yeah. All that. And that's the I think that's the more interesting part about boxing that I never really truly realized. I've been doing this my like practically my whole life or had done it for my whole life. So 
a lot of the things that a lot of people acknowledge or or understood, it's like they were all like second nature to me because I'd done it for so long. Yeah. I just told my wife the other day, she said she was talking about a fighter having confidence. I said, Yeah, I never even understood confidence until I turned pro. I was like, I just always had confidence. My dad put me through so much. It was like, once I get to the, like, let me get to the fight. Let me get on the field. <laughs> let me get away from what he doing because that's far, hard, far, far more, you know, devastating and hard and d- difficult than anything I'm going to go through on the football field or in the ring. And so the confidence for me was just like, I handle that. I'm going to handle this, you know, until I turned pro. And it was like, I had a couple of ups and downs in my early in my career. They weren't terrible ups and downs, but they were enough for me from a mental standpoint to that I was going through things. And I found myself getting confidence from getting in the ring and boxing and doing better. You know, and I think that now is kind of you, especially with Ryan Garcia, like you got to be very uh, uh, cognizant of where he could be from a mental standpoint, <clears throat> an emotional standpoint. And then go ahead. I have to say this. Yeah. Um, and it's not like I'm trying to create you no know, waves or whatever, but I, 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 I talk my talk, bro. I, I, I speak how I feel. Yeah. Um, this is the port of way you're supposed to. What bothered me. Supposed to speak when I was at that press conference, and I didn't see those same people parading around with him at the press conference at the at the grand arrivals. When I seen him with, their, with just him and his family, I almost wanted to say, you know what, I got to catch up to him so I can just talk to him and a man off camera. Yeah. Because if I had a chance to tell Ryan, I'd have told him, bro, you look around you. Yeah. That's who you really need. Yeah. Because if they can't be with you. When when you lose, don't don't be around me when the confetti falling down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No disrespect yeah. to nobody, but that was weak, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. If there was death, see my thing about about the whole death threat thing. I'm not doubting nobody because death threat is a death threat. Mm-hmm. You, you you should take each death threat seriously. But mm-hmm. my thing is, you are a celebrity. You've been a celebrity for many years. You can't tell me this has been the first death threat you ever had in your life. Mm. You know what I'm saying. And I, you know. I ain't never had Respect no to. I hope. I hope I ain't never had no death threat. No, no. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. But respect to uh, Coach Goose and respect to Bernard Hopkins, who I've always um, had healthy respect for. Respect to Oscar. It's no way in hell, man, that at least one of those three people wasn't in his corner. Yeah. Yeah. That's truly unacceptable. Now. Yeah. Here's my concern as a man for the young man, Ryan Garcia. He's dealt with psychological issues yeah. at one time. Yeah. He recovered yeah. from that. Yeah. How do you know the move by y'all not showing support won't set him back? Ooh. Yeah. You telling, you telling him before this fight started, yeah. I support you. I, I got your back. We I'm believe in you. you. But ironically, <laughs> ironically, Oscar De La Hoya himself got up there on the podium, praised Tank, but then he kicked off the fireworks. He said, but when it comes to the way that Leonard and his team and the money team are running this situation, I don't believe that they really, their actions show that they don't believe in their fighter. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what did your action show when mm-hmm. none of you guys mm-hmm. showed up to have Ryan's back in defeat, bro? Yeah. It's not like Ryan was rushed off to the hospital and y'all was with him. Yeah. I-, I can dig it. Yeah. But for that man to go up there by himself at the toughest time of that fight week was unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anybody have any problems with it? Pray about it. I. <laughs> I dig that and I agree with you. I thought that they should have been up there. We talked about that the other week and I was like kind of confused. Like, what do you mean? What wait a minute, what do you mean they weren't there? You know, and you know, the the reasoning is they didn't want to take time from his moment, but you're right. Like you gotta be there on the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole nine, you know? Yeah. My thing is my thing, and I'm not gonna you know, just hop on it, but my thing is this. You know what the man been through. Yeah. This is not a vitamin to help so, so, to to help uh, uh, cure what what happened to him. Yeah, you can only hurt him. And this is a question for whoever's listening. 
How? What can anybody say to you after the? This was the biggest fight of the year, man. This is this is the biggest fight in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. What could they possibly say to me for me to have their confidence? For me to have confidence in me that they got confidence in uh, mm -hmm. in them mm -hmm. for the next fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gonna feel funny seeing you the next time. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. I needed you, bro. I was hurting. Mm -hmm. I was hurting psychologically because I just lost. Right. I lost in a way I didn't want to lose. I'd have rather got knocked out than right. got hit in my body and I couldn't stand up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I lost and I needed my team. I needed my people. Yeah. Where were y'all? Yeah. Yeah. The, I think that the body shot is the one that, that's that's the tough pill to swallow because it really is. It's a debilitating shot. No, he didn't look debilitated. And I'm sure, again, a lot of y'all would have preferred to have seen him on the ground, on the canvas, rolling around and, and, and helpless to get up. Um, do I respect how he went out? Do I respect how he went out? I understand it, but no, I don't. I'm not. I understand it, but it's not acceptable for me. That's not how I would have went out. Nonetheless, I think he lives to fight another day, and I think that um, I think he'll come back stronger. What you think? I think so too. I think so too. My thing is this: I, Do we see Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis again? And I, and I, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I think we have to. You do. You do. We, we have to hmm. because for whatever reason. I mean, listen. I never questioned his injury. I never questioned yeah. because this Tank punching him. Yeah. If Tank hit me in my ankle, I'm getting an amputation tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm gonna walk around with a kickstand. You know. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I think Ryan has to. Uh, has the ability, if if his team or whatever put this fight together again, to close it out the right way, either through victory or defeat. Yeah, I think the funny thing is there's there's clearly like three fighters ahead of Ryan in line. You know, uh, Devin Haney, yeah. of course, uh, Shakir Stevenson, of course. Um, I know Tio's got uh, uh got um what's his name soon uh. Uh, what is that? Josh Taylor. He's got Josh yeah. Taylor soon. Um, but I, you know, I think that there's quite a few people in he ahead of Ryan, except for Ryan. If he comes back strong, will will still bring that audience and bring that money, which could actually help benefit him. I think that that's what got him the first fight. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that I think we we for the second hours we knew what level he was on. But we were still kind of with smoke and mirrors in a lot of ways because of the opposition that he had been in the ring with. And, you know, because he he's a really good talker, you know, and I think a lot of us were still kind of like, you know, kind of holding, holding out like, hey, you know, what is going to happen? I know I've been saying that this was 50 50 forever. You talked about um, some of the things he kind of you go back into your old habits, the things you do habitually mm -hmm. that left hook. It's a beautiful punch on the right person. Tank ain't the guy because you went back to it and that became what I'm going to get him with. And you it was swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss, you know. So I think he's got a little bit of a road to go until he gets back into the ring with Tank. I think that it could be interesting to see him get back in the ring with Tank. I think if Tank did have a rematch with anybody that he's fought before, it would be Ryan. I don't think it's anybody else. Pitbull. I think that's the one everybody wants to see. Well, let me let me ask right you this there. about Ryan real quick. Um, that that's like that's Mayweather Canelo. Yeah, yeah, it was just bad timing for Canelo. Oh well. <laughs> you know? yeah, let me let me ask you this about Ryan real quick. Do you think Ryan took this fight too fast? You think he should have waited a little bit to take this fight? It is what it is. You know, um, seems like he was he was out to get something. Uh, hopefully, he got that. Uh, I obviously it seemed like he was out to prove something. Uh, I think in a lot of ways he failed at, at being able to prove what I think he was trying to prove to everyone. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think he, again, a lot like uh, when, um, uh, what's that kid's name? Uh, shoot, I'm missing both their names. Um, hey, uh, Ramos got in the ring with uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh, wow. uh, it was, uh, what's his name? Spencer. Spencer, yeah. When, when Spencer got in the ring with Ramos and he said uh, he was doing it for respect. I think a lot of this, a lot of the reason for him wanting to get in the ring with Tank was just for respect. And, you know, at the end of the day, respect don't pay the bills. So. Well, 
that's a good point. However, I don't think at this point in uh, Ryan's career, he really, I mean, I, I, I admire him for taking the challenge, but I don't think that he really needed that fight for respect because he was already respect. I mean, he's on a whole nother level. With guys his level. He wasn't respected by the boxing community. I agree with you there. He wasn't I respected by the there. boxing community. And, I, you know, I don't think that the boxing community, you know, I, don't, I still think there's a big gap in terms of the people in the boxing community who respect them opposed to those who don't. I think more people don't simply because of how this fight ended. I mean, if anything, people lost respect for you, you know, but it makes for that fairy tale comeback, you know, even if it's not Tank, but he goes on to have to do some amazing things and, you know, kind of wow us for the sake of words and make us a lot like with Pitbull. Pitbull, everybody's like, yo, we want to see Pitbull and Tank again. Maybe, even if you don't get, we don't get Ryan and Tank again, but we get people saying, well, you know what? I actually want to see what Ryan can do with him now. We may never get it, but then that that level, you know, that respect that he was looking for, I think eventually it'll 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 go up. He's been in the ring with a lot of great guys, even in the amateurs, you know. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it's documented he fought Devin, uh, so Devin six Haney times? quite a few times. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's how I was growing up. I, and funny because I seen dude on, on the on the, uh, the zone last night. I was like, damn, like I fought him back in the day, and people would never believe it. Did uh, David uh, Stevens? He fought uh, Marco Antonio uh, per Perbon last night. You fight a guy six times. I mean, yeah. How, I mean, how do you? What you do the seventh oh, time? Does you? Lord. Man, I fought um, Daniel Jacobs. We probably fought five times ish, maybe even six. I'm like two and I'm like two and four against dude. <laughs> I might be one and four against dude, something like that. But he just was that good, you know. And it was the yeah. amateur system, and it was just kind of how things was was done, you know. But I know that one time I got him. That that one time That's I all that matter. Yeah, I didn't yeah, do that one time. Yeah, 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 you yeah, kicked yeah. my ass ten yeah. times. I got you once. Yeah, yeah. But um, I want to get into the Dizone fights last night, and okay. also we got a preview Canelo real quick. He making his comeback. Um, no disrespect. I don't know if there's much to be said about the fight itself. Uh, definitely w w want to recap that when the time comes next week, obviously. But um, for the most part, just want to get into. Uh, the fact that I got in the ring with Marco Antonio um, Perrybon back in the day in 07, we fought in a uh, Mexico versus USA duel, and I was 165 pounds. And the reason why I bring that up is because I know a lot of people talk about me being in the ring with Usyk, and it was around that same time frame that I was a bigger kid with a lot of muscle, and uh, and I had the quickness and the speed to get down at 165 pounds. So I seen him in the ring last time. I'm like, damn, like that dude look. Oh, I have no clue. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say I have no clue because I'll just <laughs> click on it to see how old he is. Uh, and I got to sign in, so I'm not going to do that. But I don't know how old he is, man, but it was just crazy to see him at 168 pounds. And, and you know, when we fought back in the day at 165, and it was just nothing but speed and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But to see him last night, I was like, damn, like I've been in the ring with that dude. I've been in the ring with everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, it's amazing, you know, to to see people uh, basically mature. Like, well, that's the grown man weight, you know, too. You might have fought somebody in the ambushes at 130 and now they yeah. light heavyweight or something like that. Yeah. Um, Got to shout out my man, Victor um, Morales uh, Jr. Knocked knocked out Adele. Diego uh, De La Hoya. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, like De La Hoya having a... Having a he having a tough little little week, yeah, uh, this, this little week, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. having a tough little month right body now. Body shot, man. This body shot month, you're like, man. I think the first one was the hook. The second one was a body shot, right? Was the second one a body shot too, or it was like a hook body? I mean, it yeah. was so quick. Yeah, it was quick. But his legs, same thing you were saying. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. thing you was you were mm -hmm. saying. And uh, yeah, the first hook was just. Timing and precision. Uh, I don't think you know, but me and Victor, we 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 have a friendship. So I text him uh, as I was watching the fight. I text him and told him I was like, "Wow, like what is happening?" I told him so. I said I was confused by both hooks. The first one is just looked like yo, it was just a, a lead left hook. <laughs> But, it, and I heard on the commentary, they said it was Roy Jones, like, and yeah, like Roy had a quick left hook, but it had power on it. Yeah. And Victor threw 
a nice little lead left hook. It was pretty, man. It was, and put it was dude quick. down. It was quick. I say, I say, y'all, I was confused by both the the first knockdown and the knockout. And he said, he said, speed plus accuracy equals power. KO. He said, nothing new, just going back to my roots and the amateurs. So he's got a great amateur pedigree. He's been in the ring with a lot of the best guys that are, that are the best guys now at higher weights. Mm -hmm. But he's got all the experience. And I think that his career has moved a little slower. He's definitely had some, you know, some contract issues and things like that. But I want to let everybody know that this ain't a fluke. This ain't just... No. It ain't just De, De, De La Hoya month. <laughs> no, you know no, I mean? Oscar, Oscar showed him some love after the fight too. Uh, Victor, yeah, supposed to. Yeah, he showed supposed him some to. love. He, you know, he like Victor was uh, interviewing some some. Uh, I think it was a guy from uh, Fight Hub or something like that. Uh, but the Oscar came walking over there, and you know, great fight. You know, what I'm saying this is only the beginning. You know, what I'm saying and the guy really appreciated because it's like I just you know beat up on your relative. Yeah, <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> your relative. I just yeah. beat up on your relative. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying, but. But I thought that was classy. I mean, Dele Hoya can't do nothing but go up with class mm -hmm. now because he, he yeah. yeah. I mean, he, but this has been, uh, for the De La Hoya name, this has not been a good month, you know what I'm saying, as far as publicly. Yeah, and then the main event was Zepeda and uh, Arboleda, the same thing where it was just a couple of body shots. And again, that like, of course, you see somebody go out with a body shot and it's like, you know, just that, that premonition of what just happened uh, just last week. But again, this is what I said earlier. I think, you want to see a warrior in the ring. And I think that this is what was missing from Ryan Garcia's performance. And I think that this is why a lot of people have a problem with the way that he the fight ended. Because we see, even though this kid couldn't contain with Zepeda, it wasn't going to get any better from him. Same way it wasn't going to get better for King Rai. It wasn't going to get any better, but he still got up. And he still got up. And then he's on the canvas rolling around. And I think that that's what people, they they connect better to fighters that they see willing to, for the sake of words, go out on their shield, willing yeah. to go until they can't go no more, willing to go until they're in that quicksand and that quicksand just swallows them up. However, you can't really make a career like that because it's going to be a short-lived career. Yeah. Now, it's easy for me to say, yeah, go in there and you'll yeah. get, get, get him. Uh, but I'm, I, again, I got a beer in my hand. Yeah. Go in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not getting my socket, eye socket split open. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, again. That's the, that's the tough pill to swallow for the fans. The, the tough pill to swallow for the fans is the fact that he gets to move on Obviously, he lived to see another day, but fight and did really, he didn't suffer any damage that took any true, he didn't have any true health damage, you know? Obviously, we don't know what's going on with the liver. Could be worse than we all even know. And you already know how fighters is. We not going to tell y'all until shit hits the fan. So we'll never know if there's anything wrong with the liver until he comes out and says, yeah, I can't box anymore. And here's an x-ray of, of, like, oh. of my liver. Why would you go bang? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, he's he he doesn't have any, you know, life. It was nothing life threatening that happened on the night of. And there wasn't really, you know, there wasn't that one punch that when he gets hit again with it, at least to the naked eye, when he gets hit with that punch, he's going to have a flashback and the worst is going to happen after he gets hit. You know what I mean? So I think, yeah, he saved himself and, you know, a lot of people don't appreciate it, but kind of is what it is and, you know, hate him for being smart. <laughs> As if is there a way that you can like strengthen that area to take those kind of, is, is, I mean, is it, or is it just because it's That's that soft, question. soft tissue area that you just can't? Well, the thing, and again, like I didn't want this episode to be about <laughs> King Ryan and, and Tank Davis, but it is what it is. He was releasing the shot and as you're releasing and breathing, you're, you're loose right there. You know, it's much different from, from when you're tight and ready for the punch. And like we always say, the punches that you don't see are the ones that either hurt the most or those are the ones that put you out. You know? Well, how ironic was it uh, on the DAZN card, the co-main and the main ended with body shots? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. now, with that said, and I know we ain't going to keep talking about King Ryan, but <laughs> do you think that by the King Ryan tank, you know, y'all always taught to go to the body. Y'all always taught to, you know, head, body, all that. Mm -hmm. But do you think that that 
body shot that shut Ryan down. It rung out such alarm that guys are starting to focus back on the body. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's, the, there's a body right there again. You know what I mean? Uh, you mean like in this past, just this past weekend? Yeah. Are guys like going to the body because they saw what happened? I know for me, uh, when I was turning pro, um, Miguel Cota was the guy to me. And it was like, you got to learn how to throw that punch. That's You got to learn how to go to the body like that, you know? Um, never lost it along the way, but yeah, I mean, you get reminders of what, what can happen if you go to the body. Um, but especially with Zapata, I mean, that, that's his style. I didn't see anything different from Zapata. He looked great in his fight. He looked sharp. He actually looked sharper than I've seen in probably his last two to three fights. I thought he looked the sharpest he's looked in a long time. Um, he's a thing, dog, man. And one thing I thought had been lacking from him, he's a dog. And he leaves his, his head just right there in the middle. So I've seen probably in his last two to three fights where he's giving shots, but he's also taking them. And it seemed like last night he was a little bit more responsible. Uh, and also uh, his opponent really wasn't releasing a whole lot for him to contend with. But he just seemed to be sharper last night than he had yeah. been in, in a long time. And he's not wasting no punches either. No. Like, his punches count. Yeah. He throws some hard jabs, man. Hard jab. <laughs> I mean, through it. Pow, that was know? one thing like I, I had saw about him that I both I liked. And then I also was like, man, I wish he could learn how to make, put more speed on that jab and take something off of it. It's like he throwing with power in both hands and with every shot. And power is something that it's like uh just like y'all see on the game. Like it goes up and down, you know, and if you if you using nothing but power, it's gonna go down very quickly. Oh yeah, quickly, a little meter. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. But he's the kind of fighter where he's conditioned himself to fight like that, you know. So that's just his style. I thought he looked good last night. I've been wanting to see him. He did in man. the ring with some names. He did. And then I kind of felt like, man, he's not ready for those names. But last night he looked good to me. Hey. But you know, in that division, people are gonna start taking notice. Yeah. Because he's gonna come to fight. If he ever get one of those big opportunities, man, he's not gonna I don't think he's gonna be one of those shy guys. I think he's gonna try to wrap it up. No, Wait. that that's the kind of fighter he is. That's what I'm saying. It don't matter who across from him, he's gonna try to wrap it up. And and he at the end of the day, he's an exciting fighter. He's exciting because he got a got a crazy engine. And uh, he throws a lot of punches. Really, really aggressive fighter. I've liked him for a long time. Uh, I commentated one of his fights for on NBC uh, with Ring City back in twenty. What probably did his in early twenty twenty one. But I, I liked him. You know, I didn't know much about him until until I commentated him, and I was like, yeah. this kid is good. You know, reminds me of me. <laughs> but no, no, no. He he's a fun fighter to watch. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. hoping he he takes a big leap soon. You know, yeah, I think he's he's, he's well deserving. Now, who's that up to? It's up to he's he's with Golden Boy, so it's up to them. You know, and then when when you don't have any belts, it's like it's the waiting game for the other side to kind of you know. Man, this, this boxing thing happen. is tough, man. It's, boy, it's, it's tough, tough to, to be up there, man. Yeah. And once you get up there, it's even tough to hold. Well, you know, you know. I you, did. Shout out to Jeezy. Shout out to um, Fox Soul. Have you ever heard of Fox Soul? I have not. Yeah, and then we I'm going I'm going somewhere I didn't say we were going, but I did a um round table discussion about the movie uh, Big George Foreman. And Jeezy was the moderator of the 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 the, uh, the conversation. Myself, Andre Berto, shout out to Andre Berto, and also a uh, salute to uh Evander Holyfield. It's on the Legend. Fox Soul platform. You guys can f try to find that if you want to. Oh, I got to check it out. Um, I got to check it great. Out. It, they, it, was, it was a really good conversation. And um, now I'm forgetting why I even brought this up. Uh, but anyway, I do want everybody to know that that is out. And, uh, and the movie is also out, too. I don't know if you have you seen it yet. No, I'm, I, I got to go see that I got to go see it, yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. It's a really good movie. But uh, shout out to Jeezy. I don't even remember what I was going with that. But man, shout um, out Jeezy, man. Next week, we got the man himself back in the ring, Canelo Alvarez. He's fighting a dog. Yeah, he's fighting a dog. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting because this guy watched some film, a lot of film on him. Um, 
That's what my man name. It's slipping my mind just now. John Ryder. John Ryder. Yeah. I love his energy. Um, I love his. Now I want to see how he's going to approach Canelo because I've seen people fight other people with energy, but when they get in the ring, Canelo is yeah. stand off or yeah. pat, pat. You know, it's yeah. not like that. Keep, keep, keep what brought you to that stage. You yeah. know, what I'm saying that's what I believe in. Yeah. Then again, I'm not fighting. Canelo, no, no, no. So. That's that's what it has to be. But I've seen uh, Ryder walk people down. It's going to be interesting to see if he can walk mm. Canelo down. Mm. Cause if he can walk, it, he he's a bad man if he can walk Canelo down, bro. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I love Ryder's energy, man. I love he's a compact built dude, punches and bunches. Yeah. But Canelo can do the same thing he can do though. Yeah, yeah. And I I don't know if Canelo is like for the sake of words if he is who he was two to three years ago, where he came into the ring. He overwhelmed you, he broke you down, and then he got you out. I don't know if he's got that kind of energy anymore. It's funny you said that about John Ryder having great energy and, and like you said, like throwing punches in bunches. I agree with that 100%, but I'm curious. I don't know if, and it's like, it's twofold. It's like, that's really not who I care to be anymore. I'll do what it takes to get the job done. I'll try to break you down, but at the end of the day, I'm in there to win, get my paycheck, and go home. I'm not saying that uh, Canelo don't care about entertaining yeah. anymore. Yeah. I'm not saying Canelo don't care about winning anymore. I just think that his method to winning two to three years ago was, I'm going to break you down. I'm going to pressure you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't know if he has that mindset anymore. So I'm interested to see what Canelo we get in the ring. And the other side of that that I was going to say is he's fighting in Guadalajara. So he's at home. And so whatever energy he don't have, whatever mentality he don't want, the energy of the crowd is going to give it all to him. You know what I mean? So I think it's going to be an interesting fight for Canelo at home. I don't know how many times he's fought home in Guadalajara, but I think that this is this is more, more I think we all you know expect him to take care of the business. I just think that it's going to be interesting to see how he does it. And I want to go on record for saying this. Um, when I saw the fight against Triple G, I said, Canelo ain't the same guy no more. Because if he I was- I wasn't impressed with that fight, man. If he was, he would have been mean, like he was talking, and he would have went in there and did what, what we know him to do. Uh, I think that's probably the most we ever seen him talk. And probably the first time we didn't really see him back it up. I think even with Bevo, he tried to back it up. He, oh, yeah, tried, he tried to yeah. he tried to get the job done. Yeah. And then, but I think that he finally found that brick wall and was like, I'm not busting through it tonight. But with Triple G, it was just like he didn't want to didn't want to bust through anything, you know? And so I'm I'm really curious. I want to go on record for saying I don't think Canelo is who he was two to three years ago, where he was literally living the uh pound for pound champion world lifestyle of going up and down and crushing, I don't think he is that person anymore. I believe if Ryder becomes that second brick wall, like Bifo was the first brick wall, I yeah. believe if, if, if uh, Ryder becomes the second brick wall, I believe the Canelo that we looked at all these years will be tapped down to human. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think he I thought you was going to say different. No, I, I, no. Again, Canelo's still like, Canelo, but- I, Don't forget, I, he, he at home. So it's like that's that's what make that's what will make it work. You see, but you see the brick wall. It's like I can't let my I can't let my people see me not go through this brick wall. You if know? he fall into a brick wall at home, the questions are going to start really rising up. Yeah, is he done? Is he is he not? I, I wouldn't look at it as he as he's done, but is he's done? Is he done at the elite level? Yeah. I have a theory on, on Canelo, and I'm not going to disclose that theory right now. <laughs> when the time comes, I have some uh, documents uh, that are already drawn up that'll be that will be prepared that I've prepared. You supposed to rub your hand like drop. this? We said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. You know, I'm not. I'm not the malicious guy. You know what I mean? I'm. 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 I'm authentic, and uh, I'll let you know when the time is right. <laughs> you know. See now, I'm gonna I'm be calling you later on. Hey, so who was you talking about? What's, mm -hmm. Hey, we'll see what happens after this fight. Let's see what happens after this fight. This yeah. could be the one where I just pull out the paperwork, like, yep, it's right here. <laughs> I'm like, I told y'all he said it was yeah, going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Told you. Hey, man, so this is the port away. And I told you at the end of every episode, we leave some motivation for the fans. 
This is important because I've had multiple people come up to me and tell me I've gotten them through a tough time. I've had multiple people come up to me and tell me that if it wasn't for your podcast, I don't know where I would be. And it's mind blowing, but at the same time, it's like, nah, that's what God had you doing all the time, all the all, the, all along. You know what I mean? So, motivation for the people. Okay, this is gonna be really easy. All right. Oh snap! I do. I wanna. I wanna read that real quick. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. So we had a fan. Just real quick, and then okay, we'll and then right, we'll wrap this. Right. Uh, we had a fan leave a message on our um, was it Discord? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, we have a fan leave a message on our Discord. We do have a Discord. What is it? The TPWP? <laughs> Something like that. God, will you you're not helping me. <laughs> Put it in the show notes. And you got to do all these edits too. So, <laughs> um, we so we had a fan leave this message, and I thought it was really profound what he said. So I read the first one, and then I'll answer the question that he that he presented, and then I'll read the second one and show him some love. So James O'Hagan, uh, he said, "Does someone like Tank have to deliberately think when they make adjustments?" It's a hell of a question to ask. A lot of people aren't. Don't aren't you know? Don't truly understand that he went. He went on to say, "I know you guys can read this, so go ahead and read it." But he went on to say that he's seen that in chess, uh, the chess masters basically don't have to think. Once they make their move, they know what's gonna happen, and they're already ready for that next move. And that's how it gets in the boxing ring. In the boxing ring, you go through so many different combinations. Uh, depending on who your training is, who your trainer is, of course, mm -hmm. you go through so many different scenarios of the counter to this punch and the the counter to this counter and throw this punch and slip left, throw this punch and slip right, and what's the return? You go through it so repetitively that it becomes literally second nature, where the thought, the first thought is, this is what I'm gonna do, then that's what he's gonna do, and then it's just gonna, and then it's just gonna go, and so yes, I think that. Um, Tank Davis is the kind of fighter that he truly does not have to think very much. I think he gets a lot from his corner, and his corner may tell him something that he may not have seen. Mm -hmm. But I think that at this point, they've worked together so long that they already know. A lot like, and even though um, <clears throat> Coach Cal gets in the ring, mm -hmm. I always found it interesting that when Mayweather fought, nobody got in the ring. He just he came back. That's true. He sat. That's true. He sat there. He might have listened. Or not might have, but he listened, he shook his head, and he knew what he was going to do, and he went back out there, and he did what he had to do. Tank Davis is a lot like that, where there's not much that really needs to be said, because he's thinking so much, and he's doing so much in the ring, and he's analyzing and computing that everything that's so repetitive yeah. that he doesn't have to think. And I like the, I say that it's second nature. It becomes your second nature where things just are happening and you already know those adjustments and they're being made without you literally having to think about what's going on. And when you think too much, especially in the boxing ring, you hesitate or you think wrong and you make the wrong move and the worst thing can happen. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just think too much and you miss those openings. You know, so it, it, I think a lot of fighters can can relate to what I'm saying right now, and can and can also attest that we we've we've done this so many times. And this is why I said to Tank, I said you can get in the ring, you can move around in the ring with your eyes closed. People have seen me catch mitts with my dad with the with the blindfold on. It's because we've done it together so long, and I know my way around the ring so much. He would, we would do a workout and then I would take the blindfold off. Before I open my eyes, I would try to guess what corner I'm, I'm in. And I sometimes I was right, sometimes I was wrong. That's sometimes crazy. I was like, I was like, damn, like I don't remember him making this move, that move. But it's so like just intuitive, and that's how we get. So yeah, I think that he's an extremely intelligent fighter, and I think that his intelligence <laughs> also comes from his upbringing and his being everything that he's put his energy into. You know. Let me read the other side of that too, because he had another explanation. I, I see he he started to kind of you know uh, talk about himself near the end, but I did want to show him some love. So uh, this is the same one. Oh no, you 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 put them all together, huh? Uh, he say, oh yeah, this was other. I guess I just found it odd to hear Eddie Hearn said that Tank doesn't think. That's not a fact. That is, you ain't got him and. You trying to get something from them, even though you don't got them. You know that's just that's just hate right there. But 
Uh, if anything, Tank doesn't seem to overthink stuff like, say, Joshua, because he seems to know what the correct adjustments are. Also, not trying to discount internalized training. That's what that is, is internalized training along with him being who he is as a fighter. But um, And split decision, d- decision making. Top athletes, I think, probably pick up on coaches' corrections, etc., a lot quicker. Exactly. It's part of the reason why they are so good, and it's a distinct type of intelligence. I always have problems picking up on more subtle stuff in soccer. Couldn't for the life of me learn how to play central field, uh, midfield roles, and my coaches always stuck me in those roles because I had decent passing accuracy and technical skills. See, this is when you just start to talk about himself, but I salute you, man. Thank you for this question. This was really, really, this was really, really good, And uh, but I'm not going to read the rest. But no, thank you for that question. I, I really appreciate it. Um, the, the the thought processes that you brought forth to me because I'm I'm looking at I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a kid that knows what he wants to do. And uh, I think in the second round, after after that second round, even before the knockdown, they knew that they had him. You know, um, great fight. We're gonna move on from Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. Look forward to seeing Tank in great fights. Not who's gonna beat him. That's not what this game is about. This this game is about greatness. This game is about art. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mathematics. It is a lot of A, B, C, one, two, three. And if you do it right, you only need one, two, and three to beat somebody. You, if you're that good, you know. So I think it's gonna be great um, to see Tank move forward. Yes, he is the the face of boxing. I think we had two, and now we're down to one. Uh, I would love to see him expand on his brand. And do bigger and better things, get some great commercial deals. I think he's his he he deserves it all. Of course. And I think it's about his team just putting him in the right position to obtain yeah. those things. And uh look forward to having Tank on this show, of course. Um, I tried to buy you as much time as I could for you to get some motivation. <laughs> well, I got plenty of motivation. All right, like let's I told get you, it's be easy. I like that. I like that. First yeah. of all, I'm gonna say it like this. Uh me being in this interview is uh part of my motivation because like I shared with you before, before I moved from the Maryland area to Las Vegas, the last pay-per-view fight party I went to was a fight you were involved in. Now, I've always loved the fight game. I've always loved everything about the fight game. I'm learning more things about the fight game that I didn't know about because I was just a fan all my life. With that said, there's nothing that nobody can't achieve if you don't just believe in yourself. I didn't go to school for uh, journalism or none of that, and uh, but I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I look, I, I joke with people and say, you know, I used to pay good money to either attend fights or pay good money to for pay per view, but now I get paid to go to fights. Mm-hmm. And the personalities I meet, not just because they're famous, not because they were champions or stars. But I got to meet good people like you and a couple other people that's just great brothers, man. And um, again, I'm living a dream within a dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even being here, being here. To me, this this interview today was full circle for me because, again, the last pay, I never when I moved to Vegas, I had nothing to do with boxing. Yeah. I mean, I had nothing to do with boxing. But yeah. last pay per view fight I saw was yours, and now I'm here on your show. Yeah. And we're talking about something I love, something you did and did well at a high level. So just uh, at the end of the day, just believe in who you are and what you stand for. Like mm-hmm. there's nothing, like I don't want to sound like, you know, Captain Crunch, well, nothing can, you know, nothing can hold you back, you know, but uh-huh. in all real, you know, all, all being realistic, uh, you really can accomplish things that make you happy. You really can accomplish things that make you whole. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I love Vegas. I love boxing. Uh, I love my family. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, it's one more thing I had to say. Sure. It's the last thing I had to say, and I'm not going to really get into it, but the last thing I have to say is to all the Hall of Fame voters or people, put Mr. David Jacobs where he's rightfully supposed to be. Mr. David Jacobs supposed to be in the Hall of Fame. Mm. The people that know, know his worth, know his record, know his contributions to boxing. The people that don't know, I challenge you to go Google him and, and see the people he worked with, the Rays, the uh, the, the Tank, I mean, not the Tanks, the, uh, the Rays, the uh, Tysons, and uh, so on and so forth. This man is a real man. He's a true champion as a trainer, and he's touched many lives. So Old school coach, right? Yeah. 
from DC? Yeah, from, from, from is his, yeah. his son is training now, right? Yeah, Big yeah. Cling. Shout out Big Cling. Yeah, yeah, Big Cling, that's my man. I think I had the opportunity to meet Cling down yeah. in DC. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, yeah. what I'm saying is, uh, the, um, the the coaching part about that, and I know we 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 on time, but um, the coaching part about that always kind of goes like it flies under the radar. And I use my dad as an example. My dad, on a on a on a world championship level, has only been seen with me, so I don't think he has the credit that a lot of other coaches who've worked with multiple fighters or have worked with fighters who weren't their sons. He doesn't get the kind of credit that those coaches get. But my dad, my dad can do the business and my dad can do the coaching. My dad can do the conditioning and my dad can do the nutrition. My dad can do, no, nah, I can't say that. <laughs> but I mean, that's four things that a lot of coaches, coaches specialize in maybe one or two of those. And my dad specializes in all four of them. My dad is a manager and a trainer. A lot of trainers don't know the management side of it. They don't yeah. know the business side of it. You know, A lot of trainers don't know the nutritional side. That's why a lot of fighters go out and get nutrition mm -hmm. nutritionists and dietitians and things like that. My dad is well-educated. My dad is well-versed in these contracts and the list goes on. And then from a standpoint of just knowing how to push you and pull things out of you that you never knew <laughs> were there, yeah, my dad has it all, but a lot like like Jacobs there. You know, my dad is one of the few fighters that, um, or one of the few coaches that, because he only worked with his son, that's where his credit starts and stops. You know, but well, eventually saying, my yeah. dad will be there as well. Well, yeah. listen, like you said, for ever, it's been going on the radar. Yeah, it's just time for a change. I like it. It's going to change somewhere. It, hopefully, this can spark some change and, and create a whole ball rolling of other change, but. Yeah. The, the 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 just do needs to be given to these trainers because uh, trainers can spend more time in the gym than the, than the, than the fighters because yeah, yeah. I've seen trainers train one fighter then he gone and run and gone home and he got next one coming in mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so again shout out Palmer Park Lando where we here yeah. uh, Jacob's family I'm riding for y'all y'all know what it is that's love and then the motivation for me because I brought it up and I don't even know why I brought it up but um something that we we spoke in that that um that round table discussion Jeezy talked about uh he talked about two things he talked about um mentorship and he also talked about well, when he talked about mentorship I kind of took it a different way I said hey you know uh, it's a lost art you know a lot of people a lot of these young kids they get in so differently now than they used to and I'm not a product of the streets whatsoever my dad for the sake of words, is a product of the streets, but he wasn't in the streets doing no, no dumb stuff. You know what I mean? My dad was in the streets because he just, he had to be. He had, my dad was fighting for his life. You know what I mean? So my dad understood the streets and he didn't want me to be a part of it. But my dad always was trying to kick me game and always trying to put me around people that were kicking game to me. And I didn't really understand it all the time and didn't really even want it all the time. Right. But the kind of person I am, it was like I couldn't help but receive it. But I see the way a lot of these young guys are getting it now, these young men and women are getting it now, they're getting it so fast that they don't need a a a a a, a, a old head to you know pull that coattail as they would as they used to say and get the game or pull that coattail and get that knowledge or that wisdom, get that help. Find somebody a little bit older than you, find somebody with a little bit more knowledge than you, find somebody with some wisdom that can help you through some of these things that you're dealing with. Absolutely. Because eventually, you're gonna get so much money, you ain't gonna know what to do with it, you ain't paying them taxes, blah, 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 whatever it, it, it may be. Find somebody that can give you the game, because along the way, if you're not getting that game, you're gonna get to a point where you're like, uh, I don't know what to do. Well, you had opportunities to pull them coattails. So on, on your way, to doing what you want to do in life, make sure that there's other people there guiding you. This is the portal way. <laughs>